everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. And this is a part two, yes. Yeah? So if you've not watched part one, go back and watch it. This is fanzine memories, of course. We're looking at King of the Kipak, summer 2002, issue 104. We've done the first bit. We've had a look at uh, uh, what the fans are thinking. Uh, there's been a little bit of a theme about ITV Digital going under and obviously clubs struggling in the nationwide, it's, which, which is what they sponsored at the time. There will be more in this part two on that as well. So welcome back as we, we have a look at part two and have a look at say It's a snapshot of fans. I mean, we do a lot of stuff. I do, I do a lot of stuff based on programmes and books and magazines etc which follows sort of the, the sort of mainly the club I, ideal isn't it but obviously these these snapshots these fanzines are a great look at what the fans were thinking at the time and obviously 2002 Keegan had just took us back to the promised land hadn't he so everything was unky dory but uh, we found a few things to have a whinge, whinge about so that's the best part for my these fanzines for me I just I just used I like I like the negativity I like other people to think the same as me on a negative basis so there you go this is part two anyway thanks for joining me and please if you are new to the channel push that subscribe button push the bell notification uh, and give us a like that'd be great give me a little thumbs up a like whatever um much appreciated make an old city fan very happy right let's get on with part two of the fanzine memories king of the kickback summer 2002 issue 104 and we will start with a column with an article whence i shall not return by tangled up in blue very very uh yes uh sort of uh what's the word not shakespeare is it but very well very well written this guy tangled up in blue and he points out ways in which on our return to the promised land of the premier league we need to survive thrive and strive there you go that's the three things we needed to do it sort of commented that it did look good with the right board yeah i think with bernstein there i think board wise we're doing very well the right manager there's certainly no complaints about kevin keegan a few a few raised eyebrows when he came in but certainly no complaints about this season was there? and now we just need the right players yeah it's not good having a manager without the right players but tangled up in blue was positive he summed up the article by saying this is where he gets all creative. Uh, this time we're there to stay like Job. We never lost hope. Our confidence was never dimmed. And like him, our faith is now rewarded. Where's the blue vicar when you need him? But there you go. Pop Goes the Weasels by Dave Cash. Yeah, talks about the demise of ITV Digital. I said we have mentioned that before. Sky stepped in but didn't offer as much money, of course. He just covered, tried to cover and pull certain teams out of it. And he takes us back, uh, Dave Cash takes us back in time, yeah, to how football started and grew and the mistakes made in this new TV age of coming to being and the TV company's involvement, the club owners everywhere in between. So he talks about the, the ins and outs, of course. Uh, a lot of fans were hoping this would mean less TV intervention. Obviously, we know better now, don't we? Of course, it would never. Once a genie was out of the bottle, that was never going to end, was it? And of course, uh, it was cons wasn't considered. It wasn't considered this TV experiment will be replaced by a more monstrous one uh, because obviously everything had gone wrong with this ITV digital. But unfortunately, it did, didn't it? It was a talk. It was talk of clubs learning lessons. Dave went on to say we should learn lessons, never relying on such income again. Uh, but as we know, the demise of ITV digital will lead to bigger things. So, Dave, I'm sorry, mate. It, it didn't really work, did it? But. Uh, as I say, although Sky paid a lot less initially, uh, yes, that, that old genie had escaped the bottle and we would see a lot more of uh, influences from uh, outside outside of the club and more, you know, the fans less influence and more and more from the people like Sky and various TV companies. More Random Musings of a City Addict is by Harry Stopes. He talks City. On promotion, let's well, bounce talk city. Disappointment in Wolves, actually, of, of the game, especially and how they did. And potential players of the year, Berkovic and Bernabe. wasn't quite sure at the time as he wrote this. I think Ali Bernabe got it, he certainly did. Phil Banerjee has four pages of walking in a Keegan Wonderland. You can always like some great prose from Phil Banerjee. He chats new signings, recent games at that put us that had put us close to the title. He managed to chat with a certain Stuart Hall. 
at Milmore, one of Phil's heroes. Uh, oh dear! Uh, but then again, we all liked him. He was a City fan. He was a Blues on TV. He was he was a big thing for City. You know, City fans were like our celebrities. Uh, but that's how it is. Uh, he talks Player of the Year and gives a good, good case for a few. But yes, did come down on Ali Benabia, who obviously was voted Player of the Year. He wouldn't have known at the time when he did this. Another good shout. His thoughts on the collapse of ITV Digital. And like most of us then, didn't really want this season to end. Uh, it was fun. It was great. Uh, that season with Kevin King, we're scoring goals for fun. We were entertaining. It was great. Next thing, Cuatro Hombre Loco RM Madrid. This is by Roderick Jones. Uh, Roderick t- takes in a game uh, Real Madrid versus Las Palmas and talks about his mostly positive conclusions from, from the visit, both on and off the pitch. More this and that is by Dave Miller. He talks about his visit to struggling Berry. Yeah, as I say, it, it did come to pass. They would struggle even more, but obviously... A bit of a light at the end of the tunnel as I'm recording this. He said it was £14 a ticket, a bit expensive. It was positive about our recent signing, John Macken. Yeah, we talked about it in part one. He made similarities with Malcolm McDonald and Alan Shearer. Not quite, Dave, but yeah, there you go. But he said it only comparisons. He didn't say it was good, just made comparisons. A special mention to fitness coach, uh, this new fitness coach, Juan Carlos Asario, and he cited Kevin Horlock's better fitness this season for one of the obvious positives from uh, employing this new fitness coach. Blue Invective, Blue Invective by Scott Derry, yeah, was the next piece. He talks also about the ITV digital deal falling out. I think it was initially worth three hundred and fifteen million pound over three years, and they say <laughs> they just run out of money, and backs up most of people's opinion that it was too much, too much for nationwide football. It still sounds it too much now, uh, twenty years later, uh, and he noted that he couldn't even get it, he couldn't even get, he couldn't even get ITV digital in his area, so it was. It was probably doomed to, to end in disaster, wasn't it? His hopes, of course, as well, this is what we used to do. We used to hope the, the Labour government will protect clubs threatened with going bankrupt. So give a toss and do, anyone, do any, of the, any of the bloody governments, but whatever colour, with the failure of the ITV deal, of course. And he wasn't overly confident that uh, clubs would be protected. His player of the year, yeah, he he put just put plump for Dunny ahead of Ali Ali Benabia, so he wasn't correcting that one, but he did have Ali Benabia up there. His dick of the year is a good one, yeah. His dick of the year went to a certain guy who's still dicking around now, yeah, uh, Graham Paul, yeah. <laughs> so he was his dick of the year. Uh, I'll, you know, there should be back copies of these available, so I'll let you decide why he called him that. But I mean, do we need to know? I mean, he's. Just right for the sake of it. Uh, throughout his piece, uh, he was following, of course, uh, well, as he was writing this, City, uh, Millwall were playing Wolves, and of course, if Wolves had been beat, City were, were already up. So throughout this little piece, he had little, little, little mentions of how long has gone in that game. And of course, uh, Millwall eventually won that 1 0, and City were up. I'm a Believers by Al Sager Blue. Yeah, he proudly apparently wears his shirt saying abroad. As we all did, we all did at the time. I had many holidays, and uh, I always took my city shirts with me, extolling the virtues of city. And he's obviously his younger brother was apparently a Spurs fan, mainly because uh, a certain Gary Lineker played for him, I think. Uh, but he did manage to turn him into a blue. And then he sort of uh, talks about his and his uh, fiance, his girlfriend, fiance, then, and obviously his eventual missus who was from Stoke, uh, but he eventually converted her to a City fan as well, but he wore, he wore her down. And he, sure, he was sure at the time that he was training to become a teacher, apparently, that uh, that would bring him more to the blue cause, uh, uh, obviously by being a teacher. He could influence people, so there you go. He's a one-man man City recruiting machine, wasn't he? He should have had his own office, I think. Uh, all, all credit to him. Main road to glory, yeah. Louise Deeks reviews the video. Uh, I think Gary, Dr. Gary James was mainly uh, responsible for that one, Main Road to Glory. I did have that video at some stage. I think, I've, I think I sold it many, 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 many years ago. Um, but, uh, Dr. Gary James was behind that one. So Louise Deeks has a look at that video itself. The Infernal Dante, I said we get to him, didn't I? Uh, by, of course, Dante. Uh, talks of Andy Cole and Yap Stam joining City. Oh, well. 
fifty percent right isn't too bad, is it? He talks of his visit to Stockport. Yeah, I mean he was in the Cheadle end of where you were that night, guys. One pound fifty a pint, and he said the Stockport fans were a mouthy bunch. These are these are uh, Dante's words, not mine. Uh, we do sort of know that though. Still got a big chip on the shoulder even now. Now they've successfully got back into the football league as well. All credit to him, but the, the fans do have a little bit of a chip uh, on the shoulder, which probably comes from from living next door to us in United and stuff, isn't it? Let's be fair about it. He class he class the Stockport fan again. This is Dante guys, not me. Any Stockport fans listening, just just you know, rein it in a bit. He classed them as being as ignorant as Leeds fans. Sorry, Leeds fans. Uh, crossed with six fingers of Burnley fans. Sorry, Burnley fans, especially Vincent Company goes there. That's been rumoured as I'm doing this. Uh, with a touch of the mouthiness of Stoke fans. So, <laughs> there you go, Stockport. They have... Yeah, I can't disagree with any of that in all fairness. Well done, Dante. I'm sorry, but it's probably right. His vote for Pro Year Player of the Year went to Kevin Orlock. So, he was a little bit out on that one. Uh, but a great column as usual. It's a fix. Again, one of the things that he's still in the King of the Kipax. Looked forward to gilling him away on the 13th of April. We won that 1-3-1. One, one. And the final game of the season, of course, Portsmouth at home on the 21st of April, where we could all celebrate, etc. We won that 3-1 one, one as well. Then we get one of the regulars that's still around and one of my favourites, Jed Sounds Off by Jed, of course. And he talked recent games and emphasises again the disappointment of the loss at Stockport. It was bitter. It was bitterly disappointing. He does he does have a point. I mean, just to, just to verify how disappointing that was. And this is, I mean, it's a I, I probably knew at the time, but I forgot. But it obviously reminds me, just reading through. Uh, Stockport finished bottom of the league that season and was 73 points behind us. So that just about sums up what a disaster that game was at their place. Uh, he added his views, of course, on the demise of ITV Digital, as, as most writers in this King of the Kipax has. And the ticket office gets some stick. Well, no surprise, nothing changes, does it, uh, for the sale of tickets for apparently oversubscribed Gillingham away game. Uh, it wasn't handled very well, apparently, so... But then again, I say no, nothing changed as far as the ticket office is concerned. And then we get Steve Parrish, the Blue Vicar, uh, has a piece and assesses the first team squad, which is interesting. A couple of interesting ones there. He said Sean Wright Phillips never thought to be good enough. Uh, I think that was a general thing initially. But outstanding progress, said Steve, of course. And a future England international? He might be right. The big Premier League defenders won't like playing against him at all, said Steve. And they were quite right with that, weren't they? And also Sean Goat is an interesting one. He wrote about Sean Goat. Looked good in the partnership with one shot, but has looked poor of late. Don't think we'll be feeding the goat for much longer, he went on to say. A hero's farewell at some stage next season. So he's in playing the 2002-03 season. Uh, it was pretty pathetic. Yeah, well, it is, it is Steve Parrish, the blue vicar, isn't it? He did say farewell the following season, although it did last all the season, of course. But uh, So not quite as soon as, as, Steve, as Steve Parrish then envisaged. And the penultimate piece... Um, again, not my favourite, not my favourite at the time, but the, the odd funny thing in it, Uncle Ryan's problem page, yeah, where Uncle Ryan is the king of the kickbacks, agony uncle, we know who Ryan's supposed to be, um, but okay, we got problems from real people like Mr Banks, uh, but, yeah, he's, he's been knocking around, uh, uh, Kipax and Carl Jacker, he said, yeah, I was asking like Kipax and Carl Jacker from Carl, that's it, Kipax, uh, real people like Mr. Banks, Kipax and Carl Jacker from Moss Side, who was unhappy about City's move away to Eastlands. That's probably the level we're at. This Uncle Ryan's problem pays. That's a little bit of parody, a little bit of fun, a little bit of fun. Why not? And on the back page, yeah, we have Thank You, Mr. K, who we know who they're talking about, by Shell Edmonds. And he'd been acquainting himself, actually, with the Premier League as best he could, just to get a bit forewarned, his forearmed. And he was t taken, interestingly enough, by a growing take-up of facial hair. No, not, not moustaches, but beards. Look at that. He would be surprised, you know, a lot of, certainly the last couple of seasons has been now but beards, has it, during COVID, etc. I think it might have eased off a little bit now. But, uh, yeah, as I say, it was it was at the time, it was a bit a bit perplexed at the, the growing of beards in the Premier League. So that was, what, 20 years ago. But, uh, 
Uh, he did came back with a bang, didn't it? I've never, I never liked it. In all fairness, I don't mind a bit of stubble, but I, I think growing a beard is just lazy for these young footballers, especially. So being ill at recent, being ill at a recent home match. Yeah, he pointed out he was at, he's outside at times as well. At Shell, he said. During the first half, you notice there was quite a few there not watching the match. Probably at the bars, they do stay open, don't they? And he was saying, um, I find this hard to believe, but he was saying, I have no, no reason to, to disbelieve what he says, that many many will leave in at half-time, not just the odd one. I mean, you know, and this is a successful season. This, is, this isn't watching Stuart Pearce football or Mark Hughes football. This is, this is a, a successful Kevin Keegan. He said a lot of people were leaving at half-time. Well, there you go. It just shows you we thought the Etihad was bad, didn't we? But, uh, hey, uh, as I say, it's not something I was aware of or came across, but that's it. And he finishes off looking forward to City and Kevin Keegan in the Premier League. But we didn't do too badly, did we? Well, there you go. A lot as normal in the King of the Kip Arts. Lots of little letters and ditties and dotted about as well. I've just I've just tried to look at the, the big things and the big, big items and the big comments, etc. Some fan profiles as well, which are nice, saying about what you know, what's your favourite moment, and when did you start supporting City, that sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, and as I said, a packed magazine, uh, writing quite small, so there's a lot to read. I mean, I do read Kith of the K- King of the Kickbacks from cover to cover, and it does take it does take me a while. I say I'm quite a quick reader, but you know, there's always lots to read and lots to do, and a great mix, of course. A rarity, uh, a rarity probably from the first uh, 100 issues of King of the Kipaks. A uh, good time to look forward to with uh, Kevin Keegan back in the Premier League. Uh, it did bring a lot of joy and hope to us at the time and happy times. As I say, I used to I used to get King of the Kipaks purely because I was so frustrated with City and I used to read people who were equally as frustrated and it was just cathartic for me. It was just helped me, just helped me get through as a City fan reading what other people you know uh, their opinions that mainly agreed with mine about certain poor performances and players and why don't we do this and why don't we do that and as I say it was quite unusual to have a positive positive ones in those days because this one certainly was so anyway hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching part two I'm sure you watched part one if you haven't go and go back and watch part one don't, don't degenerate anything you have done in this one so thanks for joining for this look back uh, say King of the Kipax subscriptions still available. Don't forget, it's still going, still there. Sue and Dave need your support. Make sure you get it. There'll be stuff on the screen. So if you, if you need any further information, go and just get in touch with me. But absolutely brilliant. But thanks for joining me for looking back this moment in time, if you like, a fan's eyes view of uh, a pretty good time for City uh, at the time. Uh, we've had a lot better since, but certainly at that time, a pretty good time. So thanks for joining for looking back at edition of Fanzine Memories featuring King of the Kipaks from summer 2002, issue 104. So sub still available. Anyway, guys, till we meet again, I only ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues, you and your families. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.